Well, good evening, everyone. I'm going to get started. We have a lot to cover. My name is Susan DeCastro. I'm the Ward 4 City Councilor. If this is too loud or it's too soft, please let me know. Don't be shy. I want you to hear everything. Just a few preliminary matters. First of all, the restrooms are in the back of the, win of the, of the uh, room. They have, they have half white, half red on the doors, okay, if you should need those. And I hope you've all signed in over here, especially give me your email address. And I have snacks, we have water, we have cookies, Pepperidge Farm cookies. And we also have um, baked, a variety of baked chips because it's January. I was just telling someone at the next meeting in the spring we'll have the fried chips. But we're being good this month. So this is, our, this is our meeting agenda and there are some on most of the tables. I'm gonna speak for a few minutes and do a 2019 Ward 4 recap. And then we have two guests. Actually, we have more than two guests. This evening, the DPW Commissioner Larry Rowley is here and he welcomes your comments and your questions regarding public works matters, snow plowing, uh, potholes, street paving, that kind of stuff. He's ready for you. And, and I'm so thrilled because our new mayor, Bob Sullivan, is here. And also, I'm delighted that Captain Mark Picaro is here from the police department. All right, so um, I know at least one of us, Miss Loretta over here, had a police-related question, and I made an inquiry, and Captain Picaro was kind enough to come. Um, and I'm also joined this evening by members of the City Council. My colleagues, Councilor at Large Wynne Farwell is here. Ward 4 Councilor, who is also this year's City Council President, Shirley Asek is here. Ward 3 Councilor Dennis Aneri is here. Ward 6 Councilor Jack Lally is here. And if I missed anyone, just tell me and I'll, I'll recognize you because we're moving fast here. So let me start very briefly and talk to you about last year in, in, uh, in my life as your Ward 4 City Councilor. Well, I bumped into someone right around Christmas who said, what exactly do you do as a City Councilor? So I made a laundry list of some of the things that I've done this year, and I'm just going to go over it with you very quickly so you'll understand what a City Councilor does. Um, I arranged for two handicapped parking spaces for a church on Main Street in Campello. I got plenty of noise calls and referred them and worked with the police on, on noise calls, loud lawn parties in Ward 4. Um, I had problems with tractor trailer trucks cutting through neighborhoods and I worked on that with the traffic department and with the police in some instances. We had electrical wires down. I've had potholes, a lot of pothole calls. Bumpy roads. We've had dumping. Since we passed our new traf trash ordinance, unfortunately, we're having a lot of mattresses and furniture dumped. You guys know the usual places. Um, East Street, um, right over the line in West Bridgewater on that street that runs behind the former Shaw's Plaza. And there's a few others too. I, I speak to the, to the public health um, director in West Bridgewater, Mr. Casper, pretty regularly about that back road in West Bridgewater. We've had in some instances over plowing of snow calls and digging up people's yards and also under plowing of snows, of snow. I've had calls about marijuana host agreements and also about please no marijuana in our, in our neighborhood. I've had calls about break-ins and other criminal activity, fires, um, the library elevator being out of order. I've had calls about real estate development, either uh, undesirable development or the lack thereof in World War IV. And we'll be talking about the Kmart Plaza, no doubt, and I'll tell you what I know. Um, I've had problems with senior citizen discounts on cable bills that I've, been, I've uh, followed up on, trash pickups, drug dealing, shady characters in the neighborhoods, car break-ins, uh, inquiries about buying city property, and boarded up houses, and sanctuary city. There were a lot of sanctuary city calls last year. We've laid that issue to rest, as I hope you all know. Um, I've had calls about rats and mice and streetlights and 
making private ways public, which I'm going to be doing a bit of tonight. Fortunately, Ward 6 Councilor Jack Lally is an expert on that, and he's going to be guiding me in Ward 4. I've had calls about the Abutters Lot Program that makes it possible for um, city residents to buy a piece of property next door to them, in some instances under certain conditions that is owned by the city. Motor vehicle violations, drainage of pools into other neighbors' yards, parking on yards as instead of in driveways, trailers left on streets for months at a time, panhandlers, dog parks, sidewalks, the lack of sidewalks, um, gas station hour violation, storm runoff. Just to give you an idea, I get calls on pretty much everything. And my track record is not 100%, but I can tell you I, I try very hard on everything. I've recently got calls involving the post office, and I have to say I've met my match in the post office. Um, they don't return phone calls, and they manage to go out the back door when I show up on Commercial Street to talk to them about issues. But um, I'll keep working on it. So. Let's see, what else did I want to tell you? I don't have a count of the number of telephone calls I got. I just didn't have an opportunity to call them all. In 2018, I had 168 calls. I think I've matched that or done, or had even more this year. Um, I wanted to tell you what my 2020 goals are, or perhaps I'd call them resolutions. To do more of the same, to keep addressing these kinds of issues for my constituents because I think that's what I'm supposed to do. I think that's what we all need. And I just want to make, I want to improve our quality of life in Ward 4. In many instances, that's not very hard. Um, some of them are very hard. I, I want to get some public ways accepted in Ward 4. Councilor Lally is going to help me, as I mentioned. I'm going to author an ordinance this year on noise. I'm going to try really hard to address these loud, long parties. Um, I have a draft. I've had a draft for a while. I wanted to get past the elections. I'm going to circulate it among some of the, the councillors as well as the police department and get some feedback on it before I actually file it with the city council. You all know we need something that will address our quality of life, our, our peace of mind, especially in the summertime. I also want to do an ordinance to update the auto repair ordinances to address some of the places that we see on Montello Street and Perkins Avenue and Main Street um, that aren't abiding by their licenses. We've, we've got to clean that up. Um, code enforcement in Ward 4 is what that's about. I'm looking for fair and consistent application of our code enforcement laws and also to improve them. And finally, I have a monthly show that I don't do monthly on our cable access channel called Facts on 4. And you're all my witnesses and everyone on video. I'm going to try very far, very hard this year to do that every month, facts on four, because I can always come up with something to inform you on. So those are my resolutions. I have two, actually I have three updates for you. And the first one is on property on Summer Street, 634-648 Summer Street. A lot of you are probably aware of this. It used to be a, sh uh, a shoe factory and also an electrical factory. It's on that skinny stretch of Summer Street that we all use to cut through from the south side to the east side, okay? And it's owned by Brophy and Phillips, a local real estate investor. In the fall of 2018, they applied to make the property into 13 house lots. They applied with the ZBA. And, and then the night of the hearing, um, it was withdrawn. And then in the spring of 2019, they applied to convert the property into a, um, a one large building with 173 units of apartment living and 256 parking spaces. We had about 50 residents who came out for that hearing and ultimately the ZBA denied it. Well, I had a call from the head of the Chamber of Commerce recently and on Tuesday I met with him as well as the property owner, um, the planner here in Brockton, a local resident who's actually also a planner, and several people representing uh, Mass Office of Business Development to talk about, well I thought it was to talk about a new project for there. 
I was there for an hour and 15 minutes and all they talked about was the old 174 unit complex. I never really got to an updated project and an updated number of units. So I just want you all to know there's been activity. I think something will be coming forward or we'll be seeing more um, in the next couple of weeks or months. We won't, I won't allow any, any filing or, or any hearing before we have a neighborhood meeting and we get to vet it out among the neighbors, okay? So that was a big deal last spring. Um, and that's where that issue is at. Not dead, but slowly coming back. And then I wanted to let you know about uh, something troubling that happened. On Tuesday evening at the planning board meeting, the property on West Chestnut Street that's proposed to be the access road for a 36 um, lot development in West Bridgewater, it's called Meadow Woods. And the principles behind it, one is RJ Messina, the excavator and the other is uh, Pastabini owner Ben Albanese. They went in front of the planning board Tuesday night on a site plan review application to approve a road to nowhere, just a new private way. And um, a lot of residents showed up. So reward four residents there, of course, as you know, that's our main thoroughfare to get from the south side of the city out to Route 24. West Chestnut Street is heavily traveled. To my surprise, it was approved unanimously by the planning board for it to be a, a, a private way, that's right, without any conditions on it at all. I was greatly troubled by the decision. I, I've checked with this, the town of West Bridgewater. I spent the morning with my friend Barbara at the town hall this morning, and um, they recently, the developers recently filed on the property in West Bridgewater um, a plan to get a delineation of the wetlands with, their, with the West Bridgewater Conservation Commission. And they did delineate. So now they have a plan that shows them where the wetlands are on their many acres in West Bridgewater. Um, that's all that's been filed as of today. The West Bridgewater um, town officials are very concerned about this on many levels. So I just want all of you to know, when I hear that there's been a filing in West Bridgewater, I will put it on Facebook and I'll send an email blast. Um, it, it's of great concern to all of us because the road already has too many cars on it. I'm told that um, tens of thousands of cars passed on it every day. So, and, and I just know from when I was politicking two years ago, I would get up early in the morning with some valiant souls and hold signs right there at the intersection of Southworth and West Chestnut. And at times, Southworth Street would be backed up 15, 17 cars. It's just a really busy street. And I can't imagine adding 70, 80 more cars onto it. They say with each um, dwelling unit, you get six car trips a day. So that's a lot more cars. So I want you to be aware of that. Finally, today at City Hall, the Lieutenant Governor, Karen Polito, came down and a host of other state mucky mucks. And Brockton was very fortunate. Here's my stuff. There was this grant program offered by the state called the Housing Choice Capital Grants. And Brockton applied and was awarded. Um, and this, today was the statewide ceremony, lovely ceremony in the rotunda at City Hall. We received a grant of $229,000 to make ADA compliant pedestrian uh, curbing and sidewalks in the area around the Keith Park and the Campello commuter rail station. What this really means is, uh, many of you probably know, Lynch Trucking had a plan um, approved to put in a, about 100 units of apartment dwellings on their property. It's going to be redeveloped and the ZBA approved them changing it from an industrial use to a residential use. And this grant will allow there to be new sidewalks and, and a connection to the Keith Park, a clear connection to the Keith Park as well as to the train station. So this is a very good thing and it's one of the largest grants that the, the state awarded under this program this year. And I'm really thrilled that we got it. It will make a difference for people who currently live in that neighborhood as well as people to live there in the future. So um, this is how I, I that's, those are basically my comments for you at this time. 
So tonight, I have two opportunities for you to speak to our guests. I've got a podium over here and a wireless microphone. If you would like to come up and take your turns at asking questions, you're very welcome to do that, or else I have paper and pens on a number of the tables. You can write down a question and hand it to me and I'll read it for you and ask one of our guests to answer it. And I already have one question. So at this time, I'm going to ask DPW Commissioner Rowley and Mayor Sullivan to come up. And I should also ask Captain Picaro to come up. Where is he? So who wants to ask the first question? Anyone? You have to come up here or else write it down. But I want to get you on the video so that the thousands of people who watch this afterwards can benefit from you. That's right. All right, just this once. Here I come with my hand. My name is Bob Farrell. I live at 149 Carlisle Avenue, Brockton. First of all, uh, Traffic Commission, I believe, approved stop signs for Carl and Southfield. Still no stop signs at Southfield. The other thing, we have a dirt bike problem. We have a speeding problem. I would say right now, without batting an eye, average speed on Carl Ave is anywhere from 45 to 50 miles an hour. I have seen cars topping at least 75 going through there. And that's not counting. And uh, Councilor Castro knows, I just love container trucks, the roll-offs. They come bouncing down that road. And I've actually seen one of them power slide going into Davis Commons because he didn't realize the stop was coming up that fast. Um, but dirt bikes and quads, Tuesday night, 345, 445, same one up and down the road. Last night, there was a guy on Summer Street on a quad. They're coming down off of Oakland Street, going down to the power lines. Then once they get there from around supper time, back up, Carl Ave. I know they're the hardest things in the world to catch. I had a dirt bike when I was younger. I know they are the hardest. But something's got to be done before one of them ends up a hood on them. And then it's going to be, oh my, he was such a good kid. Why did this happen? Is this on? Yep. I, and I remember you in traffic commission. And um, I, I apologize for it. We just hired a sign maintenance man. That, that's all he does in the city right now. Before that, it was a part-time employee that we had to use. We had to pull them from the highway department. He is catching up on the work orders, um, and I'll make sure that gets done for you. You're welcome. Okay. Do you want to answer that? Yeah. First of all, I want to wish everybody a happy and healthy new year, and I want to uh, congratulate um, Susan uh, on her reelection. And I will say this, Paul Studinsky is a dear friend, former Ward 4 counselor. Um, and I used to come to all the studs meetings, but I've never seen this many people on that. It really speaks volumes for your counselor. She's a dear friend, but she's a great public servant. So thank you for what you do, Susan. <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm from Brockton, right? Born and raised. Um, the issues that you're talking about, it's a quality of life issue. It needs to stop. Uh, as the mayor, I just took office Monday, but as, as the mayor and as a 14-year city council, I'm going to be working with Captain Picaro. Uh, it needs to be addressed. The speeding uh, is, is off the charts. Uh, Carl Ave Plain, uh, even Belmont Street. I mean, people are violating it. And we need to have the traffic crew back out there. Uh, and as the mayor, I, I'm pledging to you right now, we're going to pick that up and work on it because it's going to save lives and it's also going to help people because you don't need to deal with that as a taxpayer and a resident. So I'll be working with the captain and the police chief to address that tomorrow. Thank you, Bob. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll pass that concern along to the traffic commissioner and the traffic officers, but when staffing levels permit, the shift itself also puts out a traffic enforcement car, so we'll try and focus on car lab as much as we can. There was a uh, traffic uh, officer in here, 
in David's comments about 10 days ago. But that they are trying to do it right. The peak times, going to school, coming back to school, because these parents, they don't care about other people's kids. They care about their own kids in the car. I've got a question from Mr. Noble on Darby Road, and his concerns are potholes and sagging manhole covers. <laughs> well, the po <clears throat> excuse me, and, and I would just like to take what the mayor said is also as Council Castro and myself, we usually, whatever phone call she gets, I hear the next day, we probably talk from 6.30 a.m. to 7.00 on all of these. So she does follow through with all your phone calls. I just thank you for doing that. As far as the potholes, we can take care of the potholes. The sagging manholes, what do you mean? Are they are they dipped? Could you give me a little bit more? Yeah, I think we all know uh, what a sagging manhole cover is. Uh, they just fix one. I was trying to think where it was. They just fix one. Uh, somewhere near him, just the other day. Uh, uh, but yeah, they, they they occur every once in a while. Can you? Oh. I, I don't know what that means. Do they dip into the pavement? Well, what happens is over a period of time, the trucks will run over them, and they will beat and, and they will beat the the uh, uh, black top from around the cover. Okay. All right. Yes. All right. I, I I I'll have those looked at, and they'll be repaired. Okay. Uh, what it is, it, 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 I guess why I'm talking here, is that such thing as an automatic for the uh, public works? They run over them all the time. What do you mean, that? They, they run over potholes, and they run over sagging manhole covers. How do we get that to somebody's, oh, well, hey, there's a fire, let's put it out. What, uh, just to clear up everything, we, we have 52 plow routes in the city, and we and that's how we do our potholes. We do a route at a time. I only have probably six guys doing potholes. Every day we do them. So if you see something that could create a flat tire or something, please call it into DPW and we'll get it right away. So to answer your question, yes, we do, we do, we do it by routes. All right. But we, the public, uh, uh, East Street is not on your route for a couple of months, for a couple of weeks. Excuse me? Oh, this, yeah, you can also use the C-click fix, because, and, and, and you know something, and the mayor is going to have a pothole hotline, so you can call into him. I have one crew just doing those, the mayor's hotline, and we'll get that number out. I, I haven't had a chance to sit down with the mayor because he's he's been busy, but... I think we still should continue that, the mayor's pothole line, hotline. And once I get that from the mayor's office, we get them either that day or the next day. Well, the previous mayor went over to the senior citizen uh, center, and he took down all the potholes that they would give him. But I didn't see any any reduced uh, amount of potholes as a result. Well, I, as a result. I, I have to say, this is the worst time for potholes because we have the thaw and then we have the freeze cycle. And now we're plowing. As soon as we go plowing, we open up a lot of these potholes. So that's why today I had three crews on potholes because I, I agree with it. They're all over the place. And it does take time to do them. And with the big temperature drop this weekend, it's going to get worse. It, yes. Yeah, because we already have a little bit of frost on the ground. Now we're going to get some warm weather, so the ground keeps moving. And when the water just gets in the crack of the, of the asphalt, that's what makes the pothole. So it's just an, it's a never-ending battle for us. But if you see something that's going to cause any kind of damage, please put it on C-Click Fix, or we'll get this hotline number out to everybody. Or call me. Or call, call me. Okay. All right. Thank so, you. Thank you. Well, and, and I'll look into that. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Noble. I've got one here. There's three on here. And the first one is a power plant update. And the second one is a new crime watch officer. And the third one is Mayor Sullivan, please remember the citizens do not want the Meadow Woods project. So, first one's a power plant update. 
Yeah, so if anybody knows, first of all, thank you for, uh, for having me here tonight, uh, and thank you for supporting me. And if you didn't vote for me, that's okay. At least you were engaged in the process. Uh, and, and that's what it's about, to better Brockton. And, uh, and I'm honored and privileged to serve as your next mayor. Uh, and I've been on the job four days, and it's been a fun four days, but uh, a long four days, according to my wife. But listen, a couple things. I have always, always, always began, uh, been against the proposed power plant since day one. As a councilor at large, I will never change my view on that. Uh, I was one of the councils that was sued, uh, and, and will continue the fight. Um, it's, it's still being, and I'm a lawyer, so it's still being told. It, it is technically still a pending matter. Um, but as long as I'm mayor, it's not coming to Brockton. And I'll be clear on that. And, and, and I'm a pro-business guy, but that's the wrong business. It's a dinosaur. And Ward 4 has been a dumping ground for as long as I know in Brockton. So it's not gonna happen when I'm here. And rest assured, that's the case. Uh, the Meadowwoods, oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, and, and I can tell you, um, my colleagues on the city council, Council Fal Falwell and Mr. Lally and Mr. Yanieri and, and, and uh, Attorney Nicastro uh, share the same views as me. Uh, we have three new councilors um, and two new school committee members, so um, we're going to continue that fight to better Brockton, and that's my whole thing, to better Brockton together. Um, in terms of the Meadowwoods, or what is it called, Meadowbrook or Meadow, whatever, yeah, Meadowwoods, I was against that. If anybody was at Mr. Yanieri's uh, Kennedy School, uh, Ward 3, I got up there and I did a you know, pretty passionate approach. Um, you know, West Chestnut Street has always had issues with traffic, right? Always. Um, what I do know this from a legal perspective, um, what, what Councilor Nicastro said the other night was an approval of a street to nowhere. Um, now on the Brockton side, they would need to submit a definitive subdivision plan to put three or potentially four houses um, within that road to nowhere. In terms of it, if they try to go into the West Bridgewater side, which is not within the confines of the city of Brockton, that's my bugaboo because it would be only one way in, which would really, really impede Brockton. If someone lived in West Bridgewater and had a heart attack, it would be Brockton Fire, Brockton PD reporting. UPS and the post office and any FedEx would be going through traffic uh, through Brockton. So I do have an issue with that. And I can tell you this. In terms of a project in West Bridgewater that accesses egress and ingress from West Chestnut Street and Brockton, they would need to get two things. They would need to get an intermunicipal agreement with me, the mayor, being the CEO of the city of Brockton. But more importantly, they would need to get approval of the city council, the four councils at large and the seven ward councils, to be able to hook up to the water and the sewer. And rest assured, the people on the council do their due diligence and the homework. So I can tell you, I, I'm kind of baffled, quite honestly. I was at my first school committee meeting that night. I couldn't be at the planning board. But, but when councilor told me, I, as a lawyer, I'm thinking, how do you approve something with no conditions or restrictions attached there, too? It doesn't make any sense. Um, but you have the right people that are going to be advocates for you. And I don't remember what the second question was. What was the second question? Crime Watch? An officer for the Crime Watch. Yeah. Since Officer Healy stepped down. I don't know, Mark, if, you, if the captain has approved. Yeah, I don't have an update on that. Yeah, the current crime watch officer is Officer Bill Healy, and most of you know who he is. He's been to uh, plenty of meetings, but he's winding down. He's set to retire soon. I'm not sure exactly when, but it's within a few months. I would imagine as he gets closer to his date, they will post his position in our department to see who's interested in, in uh, filling his shoes and he'll probably, there'll probably be some sort of a training period before Officer Healy leaves with his uh, the person that's going to inherit that post. But as of right now, Bill Healy still technically is the crime watch officer, but he's winding down and we don't have anyone in mind that I'm aware of to replace him. But I would admit we will be replacing him though. Okay. All right. <coughs> Let me read this one. They need more security at Brockton High School. My foster daughter saw two boys in a study hall passing drugs and money. She was afraid she would be attacked because they knew that she saw them. They are aware of security cameras and so they do it under the cameras or they're passing drugs in the restrooms. Comments? The um, Brockton Hyatt's 
primarily covered by the Brockton School Police. That's overseen by a lieutenant from the Brockton Police. It's Lieutenant Frank Vidaro. Um, a, a, the school police, they do an excellent job up there. There's quite a few of them, but it is a very large school, and they don't just cover Brockton High. They cover the entire city, every school that's out there. So they can be stretched rather thin. There are many cameras at, throughout the school system. All I can say is if, if this person is willing to pass this along to us, maybe it's a spot that we can, uh, I can pass along to Lieutenant Vidaro to have his uh, men and women keep an eye on if this is being used to, to deal drugs, if they're aware or of the Or tell me and I can pass it on. And that way you're assured of anonymity. But um, we've got to do everything we can to protect our children and to also support them. These are tough issues that they're facing at times. Okay? Can something be done about loud music and late parties? Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'll take it. <laughs> um, that's a popular topic at a lot of meetings. Uh, loud parties typically flourish during the warmer seasons, you know, spring, summer, fall, on the weekends. And traditionally, that's when we are on demand because the people are on, the officers are on vacation. They, these house parties can be challenging to us because very few of us are going into a situation where there are many, many other people. We do our best with these parties. Many times, the homeowners or the people running these parties are compliant. We, there are times when we have to go back. I've encouraged the, uh, the night shifts, particularly the midnight shift, if you have to return to the same address, the same night, start charging people, disturbing the peace, or keeping a disorderly house. And we've done that. The midnight shift, the lieutenant on the midnight shift has been pretty diligent about seeing that that happens. Uh, but we try to, I don't want to say we try to give somebody, you know, a, a bite at the apple, but we try and go there the first time and just resolve, hey, shut it down, it's getting late, the neighbors are complaining. And hopefully that does the trick. If it doesn't, then we we will seek court action. All right. Why do we have to do C click fix to have noticeable trash picked up? Why can't city workers take it upon themselves to pick up junk? Why do they just drive by it four days? Well, I I need a little bit more explanation on that. I mean, if it's dumped mattresses and things like that, if it's on private property, we try to get the owner to um, take care of it because you do have to pay for a mattress now to be removed. There is a process that we go through. I don't like seeing them on the streets, but it, it usually, it, it takes a week's time. Um, the, if the person's already paid Republic to pick it up and we go pick it up, it gets very confusing. Um, if it becomes an eyesore, just call Council and the Castro, and we'll, and we'll investigate it and see what we can do to get it off the street. Okay. All right. I know it really, and I really put my phone number on those agendas. I was just, if I could just also, Council, if I could just also just say some. So, so one thing that I've said, and I'm going to be clear on this, is code enforcement. And as the mayor of the city of Brockton, I am enforcing codes. If it's on the books. It's treated equally throughout the city of Brockton. There's no special, no people are going to be treated any different. If you violate a code and I'm made aware of it as the mayor, I'm going to reach out to the entities at City Hall and let's address it. And if that's fining or whatever, that's what needs to be done. And as a councilor at large for 14 years, you know, we bang the drums, Wynn and myself and, and other councilors at large, and, and on deaf ears. The days of the mayor here, city council here, those days are over. We're all duly elected the same way. We're all in this as a team effort to better the community known as the city of Brockton. We all pay taxes, we all live here, and it needs to be better. Perception's reality. It looks dirty, people are taking advantage of it. And you know, if you think back years ago, you'd see shopping carts littered around the city of Brockton and it ticked me off. And my kids would say, Dad, what, what, why is that there? So I filed an ordinance, it's on the books now. If you see stuff, don't hesitate to call me, Councilor Castro, or any of the four councilors at large that serve you. That's why we serve. So there is going to be a different day in Brockton. Some people don't want it to be, but it's coming. And rest assured, I'm going to be your advocate. Believe me, and I, if I'm only a two-year mayor, I'm going to make a difference in two years. So thank you. Thank you.
Can you please give us an update on the paving of Blueberry and or Dudley Avenue? One individual has already been injured and we hate for any others. Also on Blueberry and or Dudley, if we filed reports and spoken with police officers regarding suspicious activity and have only seen one undercover car and no patrol cars, do we know what's being done? And let me just add to this, because I contacted the police about Blueberry Circle and some suspicious activity there. I've gotten several calls about it, and each time I referred it on. Okay. How do they know it's an undercover car? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I was unaware of any issue on Blueberry Circle, so I, I don't know what, if, it, if it's drug de is it drug dealing or all right. Um, I'll reach out to the detectives and see if they have something, you know, just, okay. they can bring me up to speed on whatever's going on. And if you let me know, sure. I can send a blast out. All right. Okay, so I have two more here. I'm sure there are more. Paving. Oh, oh yes. go for it. So the process for paving is I like to give each ward council one street because I only have $2 million to work with. For example, just to do Copeland Street this year, that was $460,000 just to do that piece of Copeland Street. So I don't have a lot of money to work with, but I'd like to get, and actually this year we got 14 streets done, by the way. Uh, and I believe Councilor Farwell gave me Blueberry yeah. Um, yeah. last year. So we will take a look at that. I, I believe that is a city street, it's not a private way. If it's a private way, I cannot pave it until it becomes a city street. So I will look into that and I will talk to you. That's already been done, it was a private way. Okay. With the help of Wind Powell, who came. It is a, it is a city street. The question was asked, it's a private way, so then why is city short flower in the wintertime? Yeah, that's a good question. Anyway, it's not, it's not done. I saw somebody out there, I'm gonna say in September, Okay. The, 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 okay. We. And, and and I think that's everybody's biggest issue here is roads and paving, and it's my big issue too. We have to find a way to get some more money to get these done. But to get these done, some of these roads, like Blueberry Cir uh, Circle, is we all, we have a lot of water leaks there. We have sewer problems. So, to build a house properly, and I always use this, is you, you build it from the foundation up. So, what I have to do first is get all the infrastructure replaced or repaired. And then I can make the road look nice and pretty. I don't want to come in there, which I can, and pave it, and then you're going to see my guys in there a day or day after digging another hole. That's not the way to do it, and that's the way it was done in the past. I need to build the road like we build a house, and it costs a lot of money. So what are you saying? Are you saying that this work going to get done years and years and years from now? No, I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying we have to come up with some more money to get all this stuff done. It's not just the Ward 4, it's all the wards that, that we need street repairs, and we need infrastructure work done. I say it all the time, all the councilors can attest to this, that. I'm up in front of them all the time, looking for money to do water, <coughs> sewer, drain work. So, and, 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 and I had a pretty good meeting with the new mayor that he is gonna try to, he is gonna try to get some extra money to get all this done. He can speak if he wants on this. Yeah. So, good question about the private. I, I, I lived on a private road in Brockton, uh, Rock Meadow Drive up on the west side. Um, and I would ask the legal, um, legal counsel for the city council and also the law department. Um, you know, legally, if you're on a private way, a municipality doesn't have to plow. Um, in Brockton, the past practice always has been. You're not getting your chapter 90 credit because it's a private way, um, but if there's other cities and towns in Massachusetts that actually won't go to a private way, they'll charge to do that. Brockton never has. Um, one thing that uh, Council Lally uh, up in the village, he's uh, accepted tons of streets that were private and now public. The only the only mechanism there is people have to be assured that once it gets approved, and my street got approved, now it's a public way, um, it can be dialed up for improvements. And I'll tell you, sir, when, when put that forward, it was accepted, I voted for it, uh, and it needs to be addressed. So 
Um, again, I, what, what I said to Larry is, Brockton is a business and we need to treat it as a business. And what I mean by that is, when you have to have an electrician or a plumber or a mason come to your house, you don't want to pay, but you have to, right? It's upkeep. Brockton needs to upkeep the infrastructure above ground, but also underground. We have pipes from the 1800s on Montello Street, 1800s. Uh, I mean, we need to address these things. And under my administration, we're gonna work to address these things. You pay taxes if you're on a private way or a public way, and you deserve to be treated that way and get what you pay for. So um, we'll work on that, I promise you that. Okay, and I just wanted to chime in on paving because I, I've talked to many of you about this and as I go along and people ask me to put, you know, can my street be paved? I keep a list, I took a picture of it tonight on my way here, of the date and the street I was asked for and who asked me for it. And so every year I pull from this list in, in a chronological order when I go to give Commissioner Rowley um, my streets that I'd like to have paved in the given year. Um, and so it's taken a while. Um, I had someone come to me about six months ago and say, well, why did you pave that, that short dead end when I live on a long and a more main street? It's not fair. I do it in, in chronological order as I get them. And I, I think that's the fairest thing for all of our residents. So if you have a street that you want paved and you haven't talked to me or you want to make sure you're on the list, come and see me. I brought it with me. Thank you. Now I have a, a resident who'd like to ask a question. Hi, um, my name is Cheryl. I live on Country Club Lane. And um, we have been to the Traffic Commission, Susan and I, about trucks traveling through Country Club Lane, probably following their GPS. Um, and they've been tractor trailer trucks with delivering to Shaw's and Stop and Shop and great. I have seen actually two flatbeds, one behind the other, carrying school buses that have broken down coming through Country Club Lane. And I'm concerned about, as the mayor had said, the old pipes underneath the road, the trees the city planted there, the wires overhead that have been ripped down because of trucks in there. We really don't have that road set up as a truck route. I'm wondering if there's some way we could have a designated truck route coming through Brockton in a way that would be safe for the other neighborhoods. We have had signs put up at the end of the street, but it, it has helped some, but they're still coming through. And they're also coming in from Southworth Street, the wrong way, going through Country Club Lane, past my house and down the drive, because they can't make the corner at Southworth Street. So there's got to be some way that they got to know they cannot come that way because their trucks can't maneuver the corners. So I'm just wondering if there's some way that um, the traffic commission can settle that matter so that we don't have to deal with that. It's not the, the only street that this happens to. But I noticed down in West Bridgewater there's a Route 28 sign. And I know it, it's in West Bridgewater, but why can't we have a truck route sign put on that same post to let the trucks know they have to go down Main Street, not Copeland, because Copeland is the reason they're coming up Country Club Lane and Drive. Thank you. Um, we have placed on South Worth Street at, at right before um, you turn about a, a weight limitation. We also have it at the end of uh, country Club on Copeland Street so that before you make the turn you can see these signs on both sides of the street about the weight limitation. We talk about this all the time at traffic. It's an enforcement issue. It, it is. And, and Brockton does have a, a dedicated truck route and that's Montello Street, Route 28. So, and all the signage, we, we can put up all the signage that we, we can, but I think we have to have a, um, some enforcement. Thank you. So for full disclosure, my in-laws live on country clubs, right? This isn't the first I've heard of it. Um, and if I don't address it, they're gonna take my kids out of the will. So, um, well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this. Um, I live on the west side, and on Morse Ave, um, Cisco trucks would come up and down Morse Ave to service west side pizza. 
And it was in a habitual, habitual nuisance to the residents. And they'd call me and they'd call Cruz, the Ward 1 counselor. Got to the point where I called the regional vice president of Cisco and I blasted them and they changed it. Um, but it's through collaboration with the law enforcement, the police department, that we need to address that. So when you see trucks, what, what I was asked by Brockton PD to deal with MORSAV, not Country Club, is what time of day, you know, do you see any type of markings on the vehicle that we can get back to? So we need to work in collaboration with the constituents, the residents, but I, I've heard it from Lorraine, my mother-in-law, and Anthony, my father-in-law, so we can work with the captain. But the biggest thing is information sharing that we can then go after them and uh, we can find them, we can notify There's a lot we can do, but we just need the information to go after that. Some of the country club neighbors are very good at letting me know yes. moments after the truck has passed by. But the problem is even if I'm able to get a police card there very quickly, the truck's gone. You know, they're gone in no time. Oftentimes they're moving fast because they know they're not. They don't have markings on them sometimes, so you have to get a plate number. So they don't have markings on them, you have to try to catch a plate number. Yeah, it's a real problem. And this is not our only residential neighborhood that is having this problem. I know on South Layden Street, I get calls all the time, um, commercial vehicles leaving the Perkins Avenue area and using South Layden to get to Plain Street. And um, they do it at 4.30 in the morning, and I've had these people at the Traffic Commission. And they move so fast, and the trucks are so heavy, they actually make people's houses shake. And, and I've, I've repeatedly made the Traffic Commission aware of this. It is an enforcement issue. We, we have to address it. I'm gonna do one more question, and then I'm gonna ask my colleagues uh, from the council if there's anything they'd like to say, okay? With the illegal dumping, can't the city have a location where people can drop off items? Well, we do have the, the refuse depot on Oak Hill Way, and the hot spots for illegal dumping, we're watching them. That's, that's all I want to say. Yes, sir. Can I make a suggestion? Sure. I made this to uh, Councilor Zoo and uh, Councilor Wendy. Why don't you go down to uh, Bass Pro and spend about $500 for game trail cameras and put up game trail cameras on the trees and catch these people that are dumping. And then you can rotate the cameras around the city and they'll be paid for in months. We're doing that now. <laughs> there, That's all I want to say. I don't want to say okay. where they are and where they, where they are, but yes. There's a street in Ward 4. We have some hot spots right. where we know where they are. Yeah. And like I said, we're watching them. I want to catch them just as much as you because I have to send my guys to go pick it up. Right. So it, it is an issue. Okay. Hi, Janet Landerholm. I've been a Ward 4 resident for over 37 years. Thank you for um, paving Copeland Street. I've lived on Copeland Street for a long time and it's really nice to have it all paved. You're welcome. Um, but we have a slight little problem with the uh, speed limit sign that you have up there, the, the digital one doesn't work. So as they come up over the hill, it worked for maybe two weeks. Yeah, no, I, I, I know they were up there. And, 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 and it I don't believe that it, came it, it from the traffic work. commission. I, mean, I don't. It helps people slow down because yeah. I'm right there at the bottom of the hill. Um, but it's, yeah, we it have be like nice three, if it worked. We have three or four of them in the city, and I don't know if somebody, if we got some grant money to put them in, but I'll try to find out what, what we can do with that, because I've noticed it too. I was on Copeland Street today. Thank you. Okay. Um, that's not all. I have a few. Um, <laughs> well, you mentioned the dips and the um, potholes. I work at the school department, so every morning when I go um, Montello and Crescent, when I take that left onto Crescent Street from Montello, there's some, I, I, I used to drive a little small car. I thought it would swallow it. Um, now we have a bigger car, but I, it, it's really difficult to maneuver these big, huge dips that are right there. Do you know what I'm talking? Okay, where is this Montello with? Montello and Crescent. So if you're on Montello and you're gonna take a left onto Crescent Street, yeah. it, they're right there. Okay. It, and I'm not sure if it's the road giving way underneath, okay. um, or if it's, I don't know. No, I'll, I'll look into that. Okay, so that's number two. Um, number three, the uh, Zamboni machine comes up in front of my house and stops there 
and doesn't go up to the West Bridgewater line. I have shoveled my sidewalk for almost 40 years and so has my husband. And we're probably the only ones that do. But yet, the year the Zamboni machine decides to come up, or whatever that is, that, it's not a Zamboni machine, what is it, a Bombardier, Bombardier machine. Whatever they come to do the sidewalks, they stop at my house and they don't go up to the line. There's only three more houses on the line. Okay. Is there any way to get it too? Yeah, we, that's, not, that's not a problem. Thank you. You know something? I would love you, that. Can you? And, and this goes for everybody here. It doesn't have to go through Council Nicastro. You can call my office. Okay. And, and, and whatever complaint you have, and I address them all. I don't throw them away. We look at them all. So if you could do that for me, I, I'd appreciate it. You bet. And then um, the last thing is if you could address Kmart, I would okay. love to know what's going on down there because it's very sad that right. nothing's happening. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I can step up on that one. All right. Loretta, can I talk about Kmart first? Okay. Thank you. Okay. So um, Kmart and Sears are both owned by the same parent company and they went bankrupt few years ago and the owner has gradually been selling off some of this closing the stores and trying to monetize the leases for the pads because in many instances these stores are the anchors in uh, plazas and in malls and so an anchor lease uh, leaseholder kind of gets better preferential deals and so what what the the company, the parent company is trying to do in many instances is they close the store, but then they try to get someone else to buy the lease, the remainder of the lease. So, and also, as you know, retail businesses are not doing well, I guess around the world, but especially in the United States. Our big box stores are not performing well. The Kmart and Brockton closed because it was the next wave of closures of Kmart stores. It wasn't because it's in Brockton or that it wasn't doing well. It was doing well enough, but it just, they wanted to close more stores and it was in that wave. I'm very fortunate to speak regularly to the, one of the owners of the Kmart Plaza, Mr. Dropkin. I talk to him every couple of weeks, every time I hear a rumor of something else that's going in there. Um, I went to a coffee with um, Mayor Sullivan in the summer when one of my uh, residents said, well, if I can't have a Kmart, I want a Target with a Starbucks. <laughs> and I do too, but that's not the way that it works. These days, um, big box stores like to be located within a half mile to a mile of a major highway. I don't think we're going to get a big box store to go into the Kmart. Now the owner tells me for now, Kmart, the parent company, continues to pay the rent. There was a recent article in the newspaper in which the city planner was quoted as saying, well sure, that's what they do, they keep paying the rent and they, because they don't want another company like that to go in there. I don't think that's what's happening here. I think Kmart continues to pay the rent because they're obligated to do that and because they're hoping that somehow someone will buy the remainder of the lease. They have five years to go on the lease on the latest extension of the lease. I would distinguish this Kmart situation from the Shaw's Plaza situation that we went through almost 10 years ago. As many of you know, I was there almost every day shopping. Shaw's closed for four or six months to re redo the store. They reopened. We had a nice new store, and then within months of that, the company, the parent company, changed hands, and they did a wave of closure for unproductive stores well, of course, our Southside store was unproductive because it had just reopened. They were building their business back up. It didn't matter to the new owners. They closed it. But they still had years left on their lease, and they also still had two Shaw's markets in Brockton on the east side and the west side. So they didn't want another supermarket to go in there and take from their existing store's businesses. So they just kept, they paid the lease out to the end of the lease. Last year, 12 to 18 months ago, a gentleman came in and bought the entire plaza. Most of the plaza is located in West Bridgewater. Some of it is in Brockton. The uh, Bank of America, the former laundromat, and a little bit of the Shaw's is in Brockton. And this gentleman is turning the Shaw's space, because Shaw's has given it up, their lease is over, into a trampoline park. It still hasn't opened yet. He's been having problems with dueling uh, fire suppression requirements between Brockton and West Bridgewater. 
I do think it will open in the next six months. As for the Kmart, I don't know. We hear all kinds of rumors. I call the owner about it. He's heard nothing. All he continues to tell me is they continue to pay the, pay the rent. A um, couple of years ago, the planning office in Brockton did a, a Campello visioning exercise. They had a series of public meetings and then made a report about what other things could go along the Main Street corridor all the way to the West Bridgewater line. Um, mixed use. Housing is always a component in these things because they can get financing for housing. One of the proposals or one of the ideas that I really like is maybe a light manufacturer of food products. But it's only an idea so far. It's, it's not real beyond that. And I, I'm, my ears are open and I'm talking to people. I'm keeping tabs on the owner. And that's as much as I know right now. Okay. Anyone want to add anything? Thank you. Ms. Mur Mrs. Murray has a question. Thank you, folks. What I'd like to know, do we still pay Century 21 to bring business into Brockton? Do you, do you mean Brockton 21st Century Corporation? Brockton 21st. No, the, 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 the B21, the old Brockton 21st Century, uh, the last city council budget, we, we did away with all the funding. Um, as you know, I've got bashed a lot recently in the newspaper about the Shaw Center and why I'm not having my party. Uh, why well, I have 640 people coming to my party Saturday and Lombardo's is the place. The Shaw Center uh, has fallen into disrepair by many factors. B21, it's a city asset, but B21 was the care and custodian of that property. Um, the kitchen doesn't work. The bars were stolen. The heat doesn't go over 68 degrees. There's mold, there's leaking. Um, but as the new mayor, and I'm gonna be working with my colleagues in the city council, um, rest assured, we need to have that back to be a showcase. We need to have it for a venue so that we can have people in Brockton entertain there and feel proud and have it in a professional manner. There is, there is no event staff there. There is nobody, there's a custodian. Um, so B21 gets no money legally. Does it still exist? Yes, it does if you go on the Secretary of State's website. Um, but it's not really gonna have anything to do with, with my administration. Uh, it's probably just gonna exist legally. Um, but what we need to do, and the key word is we, we need to come up with a plan that's got a better Brockton and B21, even though great volunteers, a guy named Dan Evans from Evans Machinery, he's a great volunteer doing a lot, um, but I think we need to go in a different direction that's gonna ultimately uh, reap a benefit for everybody in this room and people that aren't here. Well, thank you. Thank that's you, Loretta. I mean. When they first started, the only thing they brought in, if any of you remember, was donut shops and uh, things like that. They didn't bring any businesses into this business, and we paid them for years. Now we're almost broke, and we can't afford that kind of foolishness. We need some paying businesses in this city. How we're gonna get them, I don't know. I know Walmart wanted to come in here, and they got everything except shot. Nobody wanted Walmart. Well, Walmart makes money, pays taxes. We need people like that. Donut shops make money, but they aren't gonna pay a lot of taxes because their shops are smaller. We need some business. We need a movie. We need some decent restaurants. We need some place for a sewing center. We need real businesses, something that will work for Brockton. And they can pay the taxes and stop picking my pocket. Yeah, I mean, the, the, no, I, I agree with you on that. So the, the key for Brockton's future is economic investment, right? It helps our tax base to get an investment here in Brockton. And I will say this, over the years that I've been on the City Council, Keneally Foods left West Roxbury and Rosie and came to Brockton. Crown Lennon, the old Howard Johnson's up on Oak Street, came to Brockton. Um, you know, McGovern Auto, was Bernardi Auto up in Dennis's Ward on West Chestnut, they came to Brockton. But when we lose a business, I'll give you an example, Sorelli Foods left Brockton, over $100,000. That was asinine. So we need to make sure the businesses that are here stay here. 
but we need to attract more businesses. And I'll tell you, every single day my kids say, Dad, why do we have to go to Randolph or Braintree for a movie theater? You know, we went to Star Wars the other day, we had to go to Randolph. Um, but Susan Castro, Councilor Castro, gave me information about movie theaters that I, I didn't know. So maybe that'd be helpful if you share it. I thought it was really, really helpful to me. You mean about a movie theater? Yeah, that was helpful. I can tell you that. Thank you. Um, the owners of the Westgate Mall spent a year analyzing putting in a movie theater and they determined that it would cost $9 million. And as, as many of you know, we have Netflix, we have Jagunda television screens. People aren't going to the movies as they once were. If you look at the movie theater in Randolph, which um, we saw Star Wars there on New Year's Eve, um, they've actually converted one level of that movie theater into a bar and into a luxe level because People aren't going to the movies as they once were. So the existing movie change told the owners of Westgate Mall, well, if you build it, we'll come, but we want a discounted rent. 10, 10 movie theaters, a discounted rent, and you can spend the $9 million. And the Westgate Mall people did the right thing. They spent a year trying to figure out, can we make these numbers work? But the numbers didn't work. And so they passed on the idea. So that's the real reason why. All of us would like to have a place to go out and enjoy ourselves and go to a movie. The numbers don't work, that's the problem. But as Mayor Sullivan brought up when we had this conversation a, a few weeks ago, what about, what about a, a two screen place? What about something that's smaller than 10 screens? I don't know, it's worth exploring. Yeah, what I said, and that was information I didn't know. It was very helpful that Constantine Castro gave me. I said, why don't we minimize it, make it a hybrid, where you can go to a movie, like a cameo, the old cameos or the one down in Hingham, you know, one screen. But also, I want to see a Brockton Community Theater come here, right? Stuff like that, where the Brockton Symphony Holiday was at Oliver Ames in Easton, not in Brockton. So I, I think if we think outside the box collectively and get ideas, that's how we're going to achieve where we want to go. Um, but. I, I agree with you, Loretta. We need much more business and good business. Good business. Marijuana, in my opinion, is not a good business. Thank you. Hi. I'm going to say some positive things because I think there's some really positive things that are happening. First, I, I want to make a comment when people start saying some negative things about Brockton High kids and having been a school teacher for 40 years, it hits a nerve with me. I wish you people could have saw the Christmas concert these kids put on last month. It was phenomenal, phenomenal. So my hat's off to those kids with a lot of respect. The second thing, as far as drugs go, Captain, you know this, drugs are at every high school in the country. And I don't think it's not a high school in the country that doesn't have some type of drug problem. Of course they do. The issues are immense. But I'm gonna say this to you, if you have 4,200 kids at Brockton High School, and probably, I mean this, only 150 of them are very, very bad. The rest of those kids are good kids. They want their high school diploma so they can go on into the military or onto some type of institution of higher learning. The majority of those kids are great kids. I've worked with them for years. Honestly, it's a very small percentage that are bad. Okay, a very small percentage. Captain, I hope you do get, over the next year or two, an extra 20 police officers because I know you need them and we are short you now. They could use another 20. I'm very happy Susan got reelected because she did a great job her first term. I know she's gonna keep fighting for you the second term. I'm the happiest guy in the world that Bob Sullivan got elected because I know now there's no more nepotism or cronyism in, in, in the mayor's office. There's not gonna be any more discriminatory unfair hiring practices. I know everything's gonna be upfront and honest and I know that about you. So, that's it. My question would be, I'll have a question, okay? Uh, I, we do, I'm gonna make a statement. One thing that's very bad and we need more of is code enforcement. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I did mention, first of all, I, I wanna thank Dennis. Dennis is, um, he's, a, he's a really great Brocktonian and I wanna take this moment. Dennis and his, his mom lost uh, Mr. Hersey uh, recently, and I'm not, uh, it, it, dad, right, Mr. Hersey, and I'm not saying that to make him sad, but we need to recognize that this heroes amongst us, Mr. Hersey who passed was a Pearl Harbor survivor, 
You know, we have true heroes of Brockton, Mr. John Parada, who lives on Grove Street, Korean War POW, uh, Mr. Tarantino, the Nazis had him for a year. These are people that are heroes, we need to always remember that. Um, code enforcement, I said it earlier, we need to do better, we will do better under my watch, without question, and, and it needs to be collective throughout the city of Brockton. Right, Campello, Montello, the village, north, south, east, west, it needs to happen. I was with Karen Polito today, Lieutenant Governor, I was with the House Speaker, I was with Senator Markey and Congressman Lynch just the other day. And they all like Brockton, but you know, they kind of look at me still and say, what's next for Brockton? And what I say is I'm the number one cheerleader for Brockton, but it's perception and we need to work to make it a reality. We really do. So when Lynn Smith is killing herself on a hot day at Frederick Douglass Park or Keith Park, I mean, we need to make sure that we do better. And when you see trash or you see a pothole, don't hesitate to call me as the mayor. Don't hesitate to call any of us. We're all in this together, all in this together. So thank you, Mr. Hersey. Yes, my name is Jim Bosco. I live up on East Street. And I have uh, two concerns. Um, one is uh, recently, um, I did ask for some city services a, a while back, um, some concerns that I've seen of uh, trees hanging over city wires and into you know, pathways on the street. And I know that when we were young, we would see um, some of the utility companies actually doing maintenance, cutting trees, trimming trees near wires, and, you know, hopefully back then, there might have only been one utility that did it. Uh, I'm not sure, but in recently I had an issue where um, a tree limb was actually hanging on a wire. So I called the city and they said, okay, well, if it's touching the wire, you've got to call the people who take care of the wires. So they gave me a phone number and I called them. And they said, sure, here's a number, we'll, we'll put you into the thing. By the time they, it, it recently it snowed, Called them again, I said, hey, you know, these wires, and I looked, I said, these wires are not going to make it by the morning. So a truck came by. My concern was they were going to rip the wires out of my house. Thankfully, the wires snapped in the middle of the street. So I just threw them against the pole because I knew they were falling wires. But, you know, the, 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 the concern I had was about 10 days later, I look out and there's the uh, phone company. So I go, yeah, can I help you? He goes, yeah, I'm here to fix your wires. I go, well, the concern I had was I called about the tree limb and the snow pushing down on it. He says, well, I says, Would you, are you going to trim the tree? He goes, no, I'm not going to touch the tree. So I see that in city council, a lot of times, I see the utility companies coming in about pole placement, stuff like that. I'm wondering, back then, we only had like one company, back when I was a kid, that did wires, right? Everybody, owned, they own the pole. Now you've got cable, you've got Verizon, you've got all these different companies and I just see more and more tree limbs growing through wires. And all it takes is a snowstorm to knock. If the bridge is going to take the wire down for the phone lines, it most likely is going to take the pole down when we lose power. So I don't know if the city or if it's state issue, but maybe when they come in front of council, we can start putting pressure on them to do maintenance to the trees. And, you know, again, I understand the city's part. If it's near a wire, they can't touch it. So that's the only concern I'd have if the city council can do something on that. So, and, and I agree wholeheartedly with you. Welcome to my world, because there's some streets I can't get a trash truck down, because all I want them to do is put the wire up higher. It takes me three or four months, and I have said to them, don't ever come in front of me at city council, because I will talk to the whole city council, and we won't grant you permission to put a poll in. But these big companies have a lot of power. I know. And I can just throw the threat out there. I have problems with Columbia Gas, Verizon, and National Grid. It's like pulling teeth to get anything done from them. I think that's why I think the city council collectively, when they come in front, need to start taking those, the, the power to be to these guys and maybe not issuing them whatever they're looking for because it is their responsibilities. And then they turn around and when, the, when our power goes out, they blame it on the tree limb. Well, the tree limb was on, we knew about that a long time right. ago. Right. So, uh, yeah. And I, I can't it, put that, my guys near wires. Exactly. I can't do that. So if, but if I, do, I do have some contacts now that I can call, but they'll say, okay, we'll put the ticket in. Well, what ticket? It's an emergency. I need it done now. Yeah, that's what happened to me. So at least the wire broke and it didn't rip my right. you know, facial. No, I understand. And it's, it, it's, it's frustrating as hell. 
especially yeah. on my, my part. So, so the second thing I had was I recently saw in the paper about the desale plant and the city looking to maybe purchase it or, or do something. And the only thing that I would ask, I've seen this in the news over the last decade about the uh, desale plant. I don't know whether it's a good idea or a bad idea. I just would think that every time I see that subject, I think that a public vetting would be a good thing to happen because that, I understand that that desal plant has been a draw on our resources for uh, water and sewer and replacing infrastructure because a lot of the money is going to that contract. And I'm just thinking that we've been kicking this can down the road for a long time. And I think that at some point um, we've either got to, you know, we've got to resolve that issue. Yeah, great, great question. So a um, couple of things about Aquaria. Of course, if you go back in time, the state mandated that Brockton have a secondary water source. Uh, and the mayor at the time, I think it was units, decided to go into this, this endeavor. Uh, it's this uh, $7 million a year. There's nine years left on the current contract. It's 63 million bucks of all of our money. Um, with that being said, um, the late mayor, Bill Carpenter, had contemplated purchasing it for $78 million. The city council, we killed that because we thought that was asinine. Um, the most recent mayor, Mayor Rodriguez, who's now counselor at large, um, on his last day, which was last, last Friday, he signed, and I want to make clear what this is, he signed a letter of intent, not a purchase and sale, a letter of intent. And what that said is, we, the city of Brockton, has time to uh, kick the tires, do our due diligence, look into it, to potentially acquire it for $64 million. Um, you know, it's that letter of intent lapses on March 31st of 2020. What I said when I came in on Monday when I talked with Larry and, and Mr. Clarkson, the CFO, is, hey, there's a new sheriff in town. I want to sit down with these players because for 14 years, Aquaria has been no friend of mine. When I did resolves as city council to have them come before us, they said, no, we're not coming. Um, you know, we finally got them to appear when we cut their money from the budget, and then they stepped up. Some people from Miami flew in. Um, so. What I'm going to do as mayor and as a lawyer is I am going to do my due diligence. I'm going to look at this. My concerns is this. It might make sense financially. It may not. But we have data that's two years old. We need to get updated data. Data. We need to look at the environmental, the legal, and the restrict restrictive regulations. If you buy it, let's just say we buy it, um, we're going to own the good and the bad. right? It's going to be an asset but we're also gonna own the employees, they become city employees, the liability, the insurance, the day-to-day -day construction, the repairs, the infrastructure. This is what I've said, and I know Wynn supports this, and Susan and, and Dennis. The biggest thing is, why has there only been one customer in the history of Aquaria, the city of Brockton? No other municipalities have joined in. Um, so we're gonna look at everything, Jim. Um, again, what, what Moses did, what Mayor Rodriguez did was to just sign a letter of intent to do some, some homework. Uh, and, and I'm going to do the same. I think it'd be short-sighted not to look at it. Um, but I'm not going in with with, uh, with eyeglasses on. I'm looking with my wise, wide, eyes wide open. And I'm going to work with my colleagues because that's what it means to uh, to serve you guys. Thanks. Okay. Um, this is a list. Let's see. Illegal parking at Daddy's Auto. They're parking cars on Plain Street. And then at Market Street in Maine, they're parking and no parking here to corner. And Shepherd Street in Maine, they're parking and no parking here to corner. Parking on Plain Street while visiting a resident, um, it makes it difficult to safely get in and out of the, drive, the driveway. How about I'll give you this list? And sure. <laughs> a lot going on there, but um, my question would be when this happens, do you call us? Yep. All right, good. Um, continue to do what you're doing. Call us. You see click fix. Um, a lot of these are like licensed establishments, so if we go down there and find enough violations, we can pass it along to the, uh, the licensing commission, and they can address it as well. But just keep doing what you're doing. You all. Fourth of, I'll get you next. Fourth of July fireworks. Why are there so many fireworks going off in my neighbor's? Is this a code violation? Fireworks, they're illegal. There's a city ordinance. It's disturbing the peace. That's a, a state law. It's, you know, we all know. It's not just Brockton. It's the, 
every community across the country, July 3rd, 4th, 5th, it's just, this fireworks is very overwhelming. Um, if there's a real significant fireworks demonstration going on, please call us. It could be a while before we get there because we are extraordinarily busy that time of year. But please call us and we'll come down and address it. Yes, sir? Are you telling me that you're going to accept that? What? Accept what? Say that again. I don't know that. There was a code violation. I have to accept it. Who's? Are you going to accept it? What do you mean? I mean, if it's a code violation, why don't we get rid of fireworks? Code violation. Yeah, nobody said you have to accept it, nor am I going to. What do you mean? What's that? You can't get a policeman. We're very busy then. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, all right. I, I, yeah, sure. If we could make it vanish, sure. Yeah. But that's not going to happen. So I don't have the secret to make fireworks. The fireworks issue go away in Brockton any more than anyone else does across this country. It's, it, it occurs every year. It's illegal. It's wrong. I'm, but it's, it, it's just part of the 4th of July, unfortunately. And when you see it, when it happens, please call us, and we'll get there as soon as we can to deal with it. Can you put more police on? That was discussed in previous years that uh, hopefully we can do that. It's always a good idea. As the mayor of Brockton, I will put more police on. I will put more police on. Um, you know, one thing about this is it's, it's illegal in Massachusetts. The only way it's legal is if you get a license. That's why the Brockton Fairgrounds can put their display on. They get a, a lawful license for a set period of time. Um, what I want to say right now is, is we, we are not going to be second fiddle or settle. We're not going to settle for things. It's not the right thing to do. So can you stop some kid from doing a bottle rocket on Dover Street in the Edgar Playground? You probably can't stop that kid. He'll be gone. But what I will say is I'm going to meet with the police chief and when certain holidays come up that we know have been habitual problems, we have to think of it as a strategy standpoint, right? From a law enforcement, but from a civic engagement standpoint. So, um, you know, I can tell you right now, we will have more cops, um, but again, you can't force cops over time, um, but we'll work, you know, with the police chief, and I know Lynn has a question, thank you. And let me tell you, it's been very effective. When you publish pictures of kids with one eye or somebody with their fingers blown off, just like, do you remember a few years ago we had a spate of pedestrian deaths? And we put those very graphic pictures up on the buses of people with tire marks across their face. It's got to be a concerted um, public awareness campaign in multiple languages leading up to the holiday and we as a community have to think about imposing more substantial fines than the state $10 or $100 and do it as a local um, thing. So with public awareness and a campaign and enforcement, and some communities use technology like ShotSpotter to um, record the um, fireworks going off and they ticket them after the fact through those recordings. So there are ways that we can say, I don't want to hear what we can't do. Tell me what we can do. That's right. Just, just to build upon that, the public education is an excellent idea, but one of the things I actually did this year was we knew, we knew in years past Tremont Street, it's not Ward 4, but Tremont Street always had a significant fireworks demonstration. A couple of years ago, it was pretty horrific. So this past summer, we expected it was going to be a problem again. So I actually had offices come in to focus on Tremont Street. And I guess it was, I was told by the motorcycle officer that it was so quiet on Tremont Street that the guy actually came out and said, you're kind of ruining my party here. I bought all these fireworks. I spent all this money and I can't light them off. So I guess to our credit, we. You know, if anyone's ever, you know, it's been in the paper, I believe, Tremont Street, it's always a problem, and this year it was quiet. So if we have advance notice that there's going to be a significant problem, we can, you know, focus on that area. Okay. Uh, 
my name is Devonda Good Scully, and I live on Bridge Street. My husband sent me here, and I'm glad he did, because I got an earful tonight. Um, my question, well, his, I'm gonna give you his question, because that's what he sent me here for. Um, we live on Bridge, there's a creek. Now, the taxes have been raised, and we also have flood insurance, which gets raised. Is there a way for us to get a rebate on our taxes since we incur flood insurance as well? That was his question. My suggestions are, is it possible for you guys to enlist colleges? We have numerous of colleges here. I work at one. I'm not going to say the name of it. To help you. Internships. Officer, you can get some internships. Mayor, you can get some internships. We have numerous of colleges. Harvard, MIT, Tufts, all Bridgewater. We can, the budget don't matter. Internships, they will do. Can, I work at a university. We have summer internships where um, grad students go out into the field and help government. So we should seek that instead of seeking the pockets. Yes, yeah, so thank you. Great question. Two questions. Number one, in terms of taxes, there's a mass general law standard where you can seek an abatement. Uh, at City Hall. It's time sensitive, um, so you need to deal with the, uh, the assessor and the treasurer's office. Do not miss that deadline. I don't know it by the top, off the top of my head. But yeah, it's, it's, it's coming up quick, and when you miss it, you, you miss it. Uh, in, terms of, uh, in terms of internships, I supported a thousand percent. I've already spoken to UMass Boston Collins Institute. I also spoke to the Kennedy School of Government, Harvard. Uh, that's where you were. I just spent three days uh, at the mayor's elect conference. I was the only Massachusetts mayor to be there. I uh, never thought I'd make it to Harvard. I can't, couldn't believe it. Uh, but, I, but I will say this. Um, people want to come to Brockton to help us. It doesn't cost us a dime. I also went um, to Brockton High School recently, and uh, I spoke to ninth and 10th graders. I also asked uh, in all those kids who were two juniors and one senior in the room, would any of you be interested in interning in the mayor's office? And 12 kids raised their hand. Uh, that's great, that's 12 kids. Not every kid's gonna be a politician or a lawyer, but it helps build their future, their resume when they wanna to apply to school or if they go to the military or the trades. Um, also don't wanna forget Cardinal Spellman, 65% of the kids from the Southeastern Region are from the city of Brockton. You know, we have the, the charter school, we have uh, my kid goes to, Tr one of my kids goes to Trinity Catholic parochial school. So absolutely, it's short-sighted not to. Um, Bridgewater State's a great idea. I already spoke to Fred Clark, the president. So even though this is day four, I've been doing a lot of work since November 5th because I want to hit the ground running. Thank you, thank you. Okay. okay, we have to wrap up. The gentlemen who work here are being very patient, but I do have a few more questions. Do we have any information or interest shown for all the empty stores on the South Side? Okay, and as the South Side Board and Council, I would say, I'm not aware of any. But then again, I'm not a real estate broker, and I'm not, a, I'm not a commercial property owner. So unless somebody seeks me out to tell me something, or, or I'm familiar with the property owner as I am with the Kmart Plaza, I, I'm not aware of any. That doesn't mean there aren't some. Um, two, two things I want to share with you. I know some people are leaving. It's getting late. But um, when I was running for office, people said to me, what's the first thing you're going to do if you win, Bob? You're going to hire cops, teachers, firefighters? I said, no, I'm going to do a community engagement meeting. And they said, what the hell does that mean? I said, getting people around a room like this at Brockton High School to hear suggestions, ideas, and criticisms. That's coming to fruition. Mike Thomas, the new superintendent, has uh, given me a date. It's going to be the 29th, the auditorium at Brockton High School. It's going to be like this, but it's going to be magnified. We want to hear from anybody and everybody. What I will say is I met with the Chamber of Commerce uh, Executive Director today, Chris Cooney, and I said, similar to that, I said, I want to have a round table with investors 
people that have come to Brockton in the past that maybe aren't here anymore, and I charged him to come up with a listing that I can personally call these people. I want to get people to invest back in Brockton. It needs to happen. The storefronts that are empty aren't helping any of us. It's become eyesores, and it's pathetic. I did speak to Karen Polito again today. Um, the old Ganley building is, is coming down, right? They're going to put a building there. Massasoit is going to have an annex. At least we're going to have a little bit of education downtown, but we need to do better. Um, if anybody knows anybody in the past that might have been interested, let us know. Let the council know because, again, I keep saying this and my wife says to me it's a broken record, but it's not. We're all in this together, plain and simple. We're either going to go up or go down and we can't afford to go down, so let's go up. Is Massasoit planning to do anything with the former Christos site? Wasn't it supposed to be a new science center? Yes, so the city of Brockton was sold, sold two bill of goods that were falsehoods. Number one is the city council, and I was a member of the city council. We deeded over the Ganley building, which I just talked about for a buck to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, with the idea that it was going to be a college collaborative. Right? It was going to be UMass Boston, it was going to be Massasoit, it was going to be uh, Bridgewater State. It was a bond under Governor Patrick at the time, right? $30 million bond. It was awesome. Then when the new administration, Governor Baker, came in, the bond was wiped out. Same thing with the old Christos too, right? What they said was they bought it from the Zaganas family, the Commonwealth bought it, paid a couple million bucks for it. There was going to be a, a, over a $30 million health science building there. Then when Governor Baker came in, got wiped out again. Um, I will say this, it's not owned by Massasoit, it's owned by DHCD, it's owned by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Um, Senator Mike Brady and and State Rep. Michelle Dubois are working right now to try to figure out what should happen on that property. Um, I, again, mentioned it to Polito, the Lieutenant Governor today as well, like, don't forget me in that conversation as well, um, because, in the Ward Council as well, because, again, if you drive by that now, it's just a parking lot. I mean, that's all it is. And you see a couple kids skateboarding and people cutting through so they don't have to hit the lights there. So there is no, um, no belief that there's going to be a health science building there. The new president, Gina Glickman from Massasoit, is still really headstrong to get it done, but they want it actually on the physical campus of Massasoit, on the grounds of Massasoit, set in the back, which might make more sense, to be honest with you, safety for the kids. Um, but I will say this, there's some ideas right now that it might be a mixed use, it might be some residential, some commercial. There was somebody that suggested perhaps it'd be a hotel. I don't think there's going to be a viability hotel there, but maybe I'm wrong. So there is things in the, in the mix right now being teed up. There's nothing definitive, but we will continue to update everybody and figure out what the best practice would be to go there. It doesn't look good now. It's not helping us. One more question, and then we must end. Anyone? OK. Mayor, can you tell me, is, uh, on your codes, is loud music and the house party on those codes? Yes. Thank you. Any, uh, listen, anything that's on the books in the city of Brockton that's violated is a violation of the codes. From noise to excessive uh, people on a residential property, anything and everything that's on the books that's been duly uh, approved by the city council, if it's violated, it's wrong, it needs to be addressed, and it will be addressed. You made my mind. Thank you. Okay. I'll come to your next party. <laughs> I, I'm so grateful. And it, I'm so grateful and impressed that all of you came out tonight for this meeting and a full night. Thank you, I applaud you. And oh. oh, there's a question? I don't believe there's an actual time in the city's ordinance. It's, what, it's uh, like what's reasonable. It works you together know, with the nuisance ordinance. Noise and nuisance if, go if, together. There's no time. Anytime right. anything is a nuisance, you call the police. It doesn't matter what time. It's, it's a nuisance. What, anytime anything is a nuisance, beyond an acceptable. Yeah, there's, there's no specific time. Like some people think at 10 p.m. everything. There's, there's no time at all. If it's bothering you at two in the afternoon, call us and we'll come down and check it out for you. Contacted you, you've taken care of business, and we thank you for it. So thank you. Thank you very much. Happy New Year. Get involved in Brockton. Thank you for coming tonight.